a little bit more flavor. That's what we need. Definitely the characters to do. Yeah, indeed. It's going to be a hard act to follow, but Utopian Ray is going to be leading off with his own Palutena as we step onto Pokemon Stadium 2. This is deep into the loser's bracket. Yeah, Utopian Ray versus Wishes. Oh, no. You know he's he's stuck in that that helpless animation for 80 frames. I know. It's a long time coming. For those of you who do not know how long 80 frames is, that is roughly a second and a third of a second. So that's, that's, pre that's pretty long time, right? You know what I mean? If 60 frames a second, you sit in there for a hefty chunk of time. It's time to punch. It's, it's just so, so bad. But very lucky for Wishes that it happens early on in the stock. Not much can be done by Ray, but Ray doing a good job of at least putting on the damage. He's got to be careful about how he approaches into the air because we've seen time and time again what Wishes is capable of once he gets his opponent into the air. Yeah, we did just see a moment where Wishes actually connected the Razor Leaf and probably could have confirmed into the up air KO, but got stuck in shield, it seemed like, for a little bit. So that is going to be a little bit of a lucky break for Utopian Ray. We'll have a chance to add on a little bit more damage, but getting to that point where up air is going to KO for Charizard, especially if he's under one of these side platforms. Oh, but the back air? He just finds the kills with Charizard so efficiently, so quickly, and I'm impressed every single time. Bro, it's like I was saying, big stick kills. You don't need to do anything fancy. You just need to hit once and hit well. Right back to the ledge with the Vine Whip. He's gonna go ahead and reset. He is perfectly content throwing out the explosive flame. You saw that time he went for the mix up, having it be a little bit closer to Palutena that time, trying to anticipate which is coming in, but couldn't quite line it up. Utopian Ray still very close to confirming the KO though. I love these final recoveries, honestly, man. Wishes is doing a great job of figuring how he wants to return to the ledge, and he's punishing a lot of the more readable options from Utopian Ray. One of the bad aspects about zoning, and this isn't exclusive to your character, but zoning as a, as a play style is that players tend to get very rhythmic with how they put out their projectiles. They figure out, oh, I can put it at this distance, do it again, change it up. Do this, do it again, change it up. And if the opponent catches on to that rhythm, you can break past it with very little sweat. And I feel like Wishes is very aware of that sense. When you play Pokemon Trainer, you have to be aware of your own zoning tools because if you get red, you die. Straight up, that's how it works. But in knowing his own opponent's uh, rhythm, breakthrough, and you see how much he's able to get off when he counter zones or with Squirtle when he breaks through. Yeah, and I think one of the great things about Pokemon Trainer that people always talk about is, yeah, as Pokemon Trainer, you got to learn matchups with three different characters, but the same goes on the opposite end, right? Crap, I have to learn how to deal with three different characters as well, and especially someone like Ivysaur who can sit back, throw the Razor Leaf, and then you switch to Squirtle, he's going to be running in at you. Right. You're going to find yourself being like, man, the tempo is really changing, and it's hard for me to keep up. Why would you go for up and that early on? Sometimes I, <laughs> I forget myself. I know that Wishes can, he can be stylish every so often. His Ivy Sword truly is a marvel to behold. Back air out of shield, you know. Oh, oh wow, okay, so the Nair actually dragged him in. That led for this triple Nair conversion from Utopian Ray, which did rack up a decent chunk of percent, but he is still behind by a little bit of a hefty amount. The up throw. It's a nice enough mix up, but I feel like Palutena does not have the tools in her kit to properly punish Ivysaur from below. In fact, I feel like it's a very bad position for Palutena to be in, but great call out on the forward smash there. Now, just to be careful, big stick in the works. Back to grab, you're dead. No, what? I am so surprised. I'm actually so surprised. I feel like the up throw on that side platform should have confirmed the KO. But maybe Wishes really knows his percent much better than I do. This time, there's no doubt in his mind. I'm gonna go ahead and seismic toss it. And we're going to go ahead and run to another game. Pokemon trainer. Everyone did great. That Charizard did great. That Charizard did amazing. Good job, Charizard. Come back. Don't know how Charizard so Everyone says bottom five, bottom three, bad character, just out, outright. Pokemon Maybe he doesn't trainer. need to be a full character of himself. It's like, yes, he himself alone might not be the best. But we woven into the tapestry that is Pokemon Trainer's hit. He brings so much value in you don't have to worry about confirming into your kill. Squirtle, very combo heavy as to how he gets his damage and even how he get, nets his own kills. Ivysaur, hunt for your hit confirm, net your kill hit. You get that two piece, you get the stop. Charizard, 
You don't have to worry about all that. You get your one read, you misposition your opponent, they get smacked, and they're gone. Same to be said for the final title. Too. Yeah, a flawless zero to death. Stock coming out from Utopian Ray, completely showing wishes. What is up, my man? Just completely juggling him to the side of the screen and confirming the KO with the up air. It's so, so oppressive to be on the receiving end of a Polutainer trying to hunt you down with up air, especially if you don't have the best. Oh! Oh! Oh, okay. Oh! We just clap back that hard these days. Everybody's got something to prove here in Collision. Man. So I was going to say, like, if you don't have a great uh, airspeed or acceleration, Palutena can be very oppressive. Like, if that's a Charizard trying to come down, he's trying to move left or right, it's going to be very easy to follow him with the up air, and it lasts for so long as well. But it didn't even matter there, was able to confirm it on the Squirtle, and now Utopian Ray on the verge of pulling ahead once again. Yeah, we armor that. I love the way that Ray is dancing around here. He, he knows that he can position his projectiles in a way that it's not too hard of a commitment around the you know, change into the Pokemon. But staying able to be mobile around Charizard is super important. That girl's not going to kill, but we're once again in a position where... What is happening? Yeah, I think he was trying to bait out the, the Pokemon switch a little bit. Ooh! He managed to survive that, though. Shout out to DI. There we go. We're supposed Shout to out to Linger and Hitbox. Yeah, Hello? man. Because we have seen from Wisher throughout the entire set that he's done a pretty good job of avoiding the explosive flame, especially with Ivysaur, who does have, uh, I guess, that tool in the tether recovery that, unlike almost every other tether game, uh, tether game, tether recovery in the game, they're just kind of trash now, right? Most of them don't have the range, but Ivysaur is blessed in the fact they can do it from so far away and kind of swoop right under where Frozen wants to place the explosive flame. Use Razor Leaf to interrupt that. Try and hold the ledge. It's not often that we get a chance to see Ivysaur just going in for a traditional zoning because, and I kind of highlighted this earlier, Razor Leaf's not really that kind of a tool. It's not that great of a projectile, but sometimes you just need to tell your opponent to stop. A little, a little flick. Get him out of there. Flare Blitz to center stage. Not going to get punished, and it's hard. You can't catch up to Charlie. He moves real fast. If you don't stuff him like immediately straight out, beautiful seismic toss. It's going to be hard to catch. You have to guess this defensive option. Oh, my God. Yeah, Squirtle, Squirtle dies. Squirtle dies. And, you know, it's crazy to me because I feel like whenever I'm watching Palutena's play, very rarely do I see those wings ever connect. Very rarely. They'll throw it out. Oh, it just barely got shielded. Usually it's in a scenario where, oh, they shielded it, but the wind box pushed them far enough away that it's hard for them to punish. But today, I feel like all the wings are connecting where they need to. It's it's so oh, enough move because if you if you get the read on mispositioning, so like in that instance it was uh, Pokemon Shield, yes. Right. You know that there's a lot of invincibility on that, but the Pokemon has to come out eventually. So you put out the hitbox, a lot of its fault is the fact that it takes a while to come out. It's a great response in that situation. And you can even see that against, say for instance, uh, a spot dodge or a really laggy option. It's great for that. And it has respectable knockback. Halos is going to be the pick for game three. To have, oh wow, okay, into the waterfall, let's go. No flinch though. But man, you know, I'm thinking the stage like this, uh, when home court for Pokemon Trainer, but also uh, it does offer uh, a little bit of freedom, especially if you want to be Charizard coming down with those platforms being above the ledge like that. I actually really like this stage for the trainer. I feel like all of the Pokemon are able to make effective use of it. It's fairly large on the side, so you know Charizard and Ivysaur are going to be able to come back forever. The fact that it has walls means that Squirtle has a bit more variety in how he returns. It's worth noting, he has a little bit of a wall jump, and more importantly, a wall cling, so he's got some mixed up options here and there. Also, being as they all tend to kill off the top, you don't have to worry about the fact that the ceiling is just a little bit larger than average because you make so much good use out of every other aspect of this. On top of that, look at those platforms. This just belongs to wishes. I know, he can't get out. Go for the down throw, not going to KO. I for a back throw, of course, will kill at this percent if he ups, go for that as well. Going for the down here, trying to get the two frame punished. But still, Wishes is hunting down Utopian Ray. His ledge trapping has been immaculate. He can't get away from the corner of the stage. Coming up from the ledge, I love it. Just put that hitbox out. 
quite amazing that Ray has not managed to lose this stock yet. At 175, this stock's got to go. But staying alive, he's putting on the pressure for wishes. And even reading the air dodge right there, explosively putting in the work. And Ray got a little bit of a lead now. Especially against someone like Charizard, who's a bit bigger, falls a bit slower. It's a hard place to be. Now, once again, Squirtle taking these hits. We talked about this a little bit before, but Squirtle's a fantastic character for fighting Palutena. And I'm actually very impressed with how Ray's been able to handle Squirtle. Oh, and I mean, you know, talking about, oh, and never mind, forget it, Squirtle's gone. Because obviously we're back on deck, but it does look like uh, I feel uh, in comparison to what we've seen a little bit earlier today, or in comparison to even when he was fighting Mars, he's been a little bit more comfortable with sitting on the Ivysaur. He's been going for a lot of back airs, trying to get nares out of shields and punishes, and using that Razor Leaf a whole lot more, trying to maybe slow things down. Gonna back off with the Razor Leaf right there. Trying to make sure that he can, it, it's really a way where he's like, if I can get it to connect, I can get my conversion. But that's also where a lot of Pokemon trainers can struggle as well, right? Sometimes they'll rely on the Razor a little too heavily and they streamline something. That goes back to what you were saying earlier, where when a character has a projectile, if you're able to catch on to that pattern, you're going to be able to blow him up. I almost looked like it's going to kill Same. Like Charizard forward air, it's a lot faster of an option than it seems. You wouldn't think a character like that it has a spacing option that respectable. I wonder, on a stage like this? No, I didn't think so, yeah. Uh, he did good the platform DI. assist. He needs to be able to do that on the platforms. That way, uh, Utopian Lake can have an opportunity to DI out to the right. But nonetheless, high enough percentages say otherwise. And now Ray's sitting on his last stock. But, which is sitting heavy, 134? With a read like that? The Ray of Light. The Ray of Light. As Palutena's guidance. Letting them know that we're gonna see who's gonna go up 2-1 in the set. Of course, we'll have uh, that advantage in the counter pick economy to at least have one more game to work with on a stage of their choice. But man, the parries are coming out from both players right now. They are showing how hard they want it. This in particular, this situation right here, is why I love Palo's Pokemon League for Pokemon Trigger. See how Ray had to be so decisive about like, how he wanted to come off the ledge, come off the platform. Ivysaur in particular does such a good job of controlling this entire stage that it forces your opponent to make so many decisions. And now, even with the lead, Wright still has to respect a good amount of space. He's putting up plenty of hitboxes and doing a great job of reacting to wishes. But look how quickly this match can turn. And yeah, that was very close for uh, wishes there, right? That, that fine whip could have paid. Oh, no way. Yo, we out. <laughs> and that's why he did it, man. It looked like, where's, where's Frozen? Where's he at? Oh, that's close to flame. Oh, it's over. Oh. Oh. Look at this. Mm, no, nah. okay, I'm just gonna do it over here. Yeah. That's one of the things I actually like a lot about. Um, I see this in particular with a lot of the New York college tennis, and there's a lot of them. Uh, the misdirection that you could see with explosive flame, like repositioning the flame itself on platforms or the ledge. Because it, it sort of drives your attention away from like, where is Palutena? Why is this projectile here? If you use it too often, then it's just another, you know, part of the puzzle that gets solved quickly. But as a mix-up option, it's brilliant. I actually love the use of the water gun from which is there to just easily gain stage control while Utopian Ray was going for that auto reticle. And now he's actually managed to get 45% simply due to the fact that he was able to control center stage for that long and beat out all of the off from Utopian Ray. And he's still keeping it going. Once again, the use of water gun pushes him to the corner. I don't know which is acting as hesitant as he is to press on to Ray, but at the same time, I have to respect the decisions because it's like, that kind of patience is what's going to help him out in the long run. It's still a very doable set. Wishes could potentially bring us to a game five, especially if he manages the percentage differential the way that he has done in the past few games. He's going to switch to Charizard. Almost gets the KO immediately after switch like we're used to him doing in the forward tilt. Finally, going to be the KO. Wishes going up a stock. We're already seeing a very different game than we saw last time on Kalos. The conversions from Squirtle starting off already more damage. The back air pushing them away. Man, Wishes is popping off. 
He has to. He's got so much to prove, now, especially given the events earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. And we already know that he's a talented player, but pressure's on him. He's got the spotlight. Now it's just a matter of showing how well he can perform while it's on him. Okay, going for the up air. Gets a reset yep. scenario into the Vine Whip. Wishes on the verge of three stalking Utopian Ray immediately after losing on the very same stage. And it's such a strong vortex. We get to see out of wishes too. Not only constantly feels loose with up air, you know eventually Ray's gonna position oh himself, gonna find yourself right at the mercy of Vine Whip. And yeah, it's not killing right there, but it killed earlier. And at these climbing percentages, it's bound to kill again if Ray isn't careful. You saw that down air come out and an up air to close out a three stalk from Wish. Big hitbox. I, think I, I remember I've seen it on my Twitter feed how ridiculous the hitbox <laughs> for is. Ivy's up air and down air. I swear it's like he had a child. It's as big as him, if not bigger even. It's crazy. It, it, it is actually it's crazy. Than I swear. It's kind of OD. But hey, listen, you got to put it to an advantage. And that was a great way of doing so. You saw how Ivy saw it just a little spaced outwards. Didn't have to worry about the punish. Potential down air, potential jab. Don't worry about it. Up in it. Get rid of it. Bring ourselves to game five. And it seems like we're going to Pokemon Stadium 2, Flamba. Oh. It's been a set, man. Hey, hey. It's been a ride. It's been a ride, especially for Wishes. He's had the wildest ride of them all. It's like Superman at Six Flags. It's really, sometimes you do not know what to expect. But Wishes adapting as best as he can to the scenario that he's been given and has been paying off. But Utopian Ray still trying to get more going. Coming through a little pokes here and there. That's all Ray really needs. Just dip in and out. Wait for the switch to Ivysaur where it's a better fight for him. If he can manage that, and here we are. The problem is that the fight against Ivysaur is probably the most level that this match can get. Get to Charizard has proven time again that Charizard's actually a problem. Like, he only comes out when the percentages are insane. And even if that, he manages, we've seen him wishes forward air and forward tilt. Just manage to wait out the pressure until they're at that percentages where he can come to swing in for the kill. And there he goes, he's running in, trying to see if he can catch Token Ray and Shield. Token Ray moving and acting quickly out of Shield, though. And that's one of those other things as well, where you have to make sure that you don't commit to a defensive option for too long, because then it makes it very easy for the opposition to say, hey, I know exactly what you're going to do. Or just reacting, even, because you take too long to decide what you want to do. All right, I like the forward tilt option. Oh, that's a punch. Big punish at that. And Ray's going to take the lead as far as stocks are concerned. But 93%, that's that's easy work for, for wishes. We've seen time and time again. Boy, Ray is actually doing a good job of staying very erratic with his patterns now. We see that he's using a lot of different options for the sake of juggling wishes. Not something we get a chance to see from Palatani using very more vertical um, juggles. And even at that, he's mixed up how he's used explosive points throughout the set to avoid getting into that rhythm that we were talking about earlier. Now, Wishes able to get that stock, trying to make up for the damage deficit, but Utopian Ray has been doing just an immaculate job. Now he's going for a little bit of, seems like a platform camp, uh, campy approach, right? He's hopping on that side platform saying, hey, do an aerial, I'm gonna try to punch whatever you do, but look, he's the water gonna say, hey, if that's what your plan's gonna be, I'm just gonna push you to the corner and we can play this game. Utopian Ray is trying to do his absolute hardest to make sure that Wishes has to earn every single percent. I love the idea of circle camp and Squirtle at these percentages especially because of course his wishes into the situation of oh is he just going to keep on doing this this dance with Ray and let him win this or is he forced to switch off it? and if he switches off we've seen that Ray doesn't have as much trouble fighting against the Ivysaur compared to the other characters so it's kind of a, a hard balance to keep her wishes. I feel like he's doing it well, but very good on Ray to be that observant of how he's fighting against the different characters. And now Ray's sitting on less stock. Yeah, wishes with this great patience, right? He went for the throw, he said, I'm gonna wait out the air dodge. It almost felt very Smash 4-esque. He just waited for it and then reacted with the up air, was able to confirm the KO, knowing that that was probably the best reset to go for based off of the defensive options Topian Ray has picked thus far. 
just the little hits here and there. It's always telling you. Forward throw. Strange DI makes it actually put into a really good positioning for that explosive play. But that's enough of that. Let's see what happens here. Way too far for a back throw, but nails the down throw. Guard there. Here we are. Last stock situation of game five. Yo. Toping way only down by 30 some odd percent. 43 now, but it's not going to be too much of a distraction for him. But throwing out that counter, uh, guessing the wrong exchange in neutral. They're expecting to get an attack to come from Wishes, but Wishes did not bite. Oh, man. And this is where he's been struggling as well. On the ground against this Squirtle. That's where he gets the tilt to set oh, up. Oh, here it comes. For this. Forward smash comes for out. That. And, and that's exactly why, man. Off. That's Shake exactly why. He is out. He's hoping Ray knocked out. And Wishes going to be moving Ray on. knew. He knew. That was the exact reason he was doing that platform camping. He was like, all right, I can take an up air. I can take whatever arrow you want to throw at me. I'm not going to die. But the moment I've been on the base platform, I've been getting hit by these tilts, which lead to hard knockdowns. And we saw exactly what it does. Boom. And in it comes. I love it, man. Yeah, well, what sound do you think Squirtle makes when he does his forward smash? Squirtle. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> but, uh... I need to pee dumb bag. <laughs>